And the last way we understand that we're successful is uh, when we call out the best in others. I love that. When we call out the best in others. I've, I've got a friend who was with us this week, and we asked him, we asked him, would you, would you come and join our teaching team this week? But we didn't, we didn't like let him teach exactly. We let, we let him act, and he portrayed characters. Now, man's name is Tom Urbani, and he's going to come up on the stage in just a minute. Tom is a former major league pitcher, pitched for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Detroit Tigers, right? Lived out my dream. <laughs> I'm... I'm still hoping that when I grow up, which I don't know when that will be, but I'm hoping that when I grow up, I get to be a professional baseball player. But Tom did it. Amazing. Now, here's this, like, you know, world-class athlete, and he, we said, would you just come and portray some people? Like we said, could you, could you be Simon Peter? You kids remember Simon Peter from this week? Yeah, yeah he's Simon Peter. And, and then we asked him, well, can you portray Lazarus, a guy that Jesus brought back from the dead? Can you portray that guy, you know, so he comes out wrapped in toilet paper, like, you know, whatever that represents, and he comes out and he does it, you know, and then we said, and, and while you're up here, can, can you, we're going to tell the story of the lost sheep. Would you mind just portraying Larry the lost sheep? <laughs> all right, and so with all that background, I want you to welcome someone who calls out the best in others. I want you to welcome Tom or Bonnie, please. All right, Tom. Hi, Pastor Brad. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Can't get enough of those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me either. All, all of them. They're all so fantastic. So, so before, before I ask Tom some questions, let me just kind of lay this out for you. So on Tuesday, this last week, the story was the story of the lost sheep. And I got to teach two days, and Pastor Ryan got to teach two days with our third through fifth graders. And uh, so I didn't get to teach that day, but I, I, I sneaked in and watched what was going on in the lesson. And I, and I found out, I'm, I'm getting up there, and uh, some, someone was telling Ryan, apparently Ryan was going too fast, you know, in the lesson, and taking up, you know, taking up less time than I needed to fill, because there's rotations, and it's got to be on time, and don't you know, you know, and so, so someone's in the back of the room saying to Ryan, stretch it out. <laughs> and so, you know, Ryan's trying to think on his feet, and it's like, well, I've already covered most of the story, what are we going to do? And so he turns to Larry the lost sheep, and out, off script, he says to this man, who's, you know, who's in the sheep outfit, he goes, we've heard that sheep love to dance. Would, would, you mind, would you mind baseball player Larry the Lost Sheep, would you mind just, just showing us how sheep dance? And we actually got video. <laughs> we get down on all fours once in a while. We're trying to hop around. But we love being up on our high legs. <laughs> we just celebrate raising our hands. <laughs> Humility at its best. <laughs> you know, you get you get this, the good sport of the week. You get the good sport of the year award, man. That, that's an award's an award. I'll know, take it. <laughs> oh man, that's just so great. And we all got to celebrate that. And uh, it's one of my highlights from Blitz this this last week. It's on his phone, so yeah. Yeah, it's on my phone. <laughs> yeah, I actually caught, I'm the, I'm the guy, I'm the photographer there, so. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, hey, so I, wanted, I want you to meet Tom. Tom told the story of Simon Peter, told the story of Larry the Lost Sheep, told the story of Lazarus, but he never got to tell his own story this week. So our kids didn't even know he was a ball player, didn't know anything about him. They just thought he's a sheep, you know, or a guy wrapped in toilet paper coming back to life. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great if, if Tom could just share some of his story with all of us, including our campers today, and let us hear what that story is like. So let's start with this. Uh, my childhood dream, if people would have asked me when I was little, you know, what are you going to do when you grow up? I would have said, I want to be a major league baseball player. You, you were, <laughs> right? So tell us, tell us about your path uh, to becoming a pro uh, athlete, a pro pitcher. Um, I will first start out with being a sheep was a lot easier than being Tom. Today. <laughs> so I appreciated that role. Um, but yeah, my, my dream from a very young age was to be a professional baseball player. It's all I ever wanted. It's what I wanted to do. It's what I loved. Um, I was good at it. So um, I knew from middle school that, well, I'll, I'll back up. They had a career day and, you know, police officers and firemen and everyone comes to the school. Then you go to their homeroom and you pick your top three people or professions that you want to be. And mine read all the same, professional baseball player all the way down. I remember showing this to my stepfather who in turn said, hey, one in a million make it. 
uh, maybe you should plan on something else. And I got a lot of that growing up. I didn't much listen to it, and my parents knew that I was serious. So going forward a few years, my wife and I over here, and granddaughter, my granddaughter wasn't there, but my wife was. We get a phone call. It's a player development guy for St. Louis. And um, he said, put your phone on speaker and get your wife. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm, I'm getting released. Um, but pack your bags, you're going to St. Louis. My very f- next phone call after dancing around without the sheep costume on <laughs> was to my parents. You've done that dance before. I've done that okay. dance you know, right. <laughs> in an apartment in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> Um, But my next phone call was to my parents in which I brought up, hey, remember that one in a million business? And they're like, yeah, where's this going? And well, I am that one today. Um, I'm on my way to St. Louis. And so, (laughs) thank you. Um, It was a dream come true. It was absolutely everything I thought it would be. Um, Hopefully it was for my wife as well. (laughs) But... As all good things do, that it, things come to an end, and and I never prepared myself for that. I would, had such tunnel vision to get to where I was going. The day that that was over, um, I was completely unprepared for. It was a it was a definite shock. Yeah, wow. So how did that how did that affect you? And and let's weave in some story of your faith in in Jesus in that process, because those two kind of kind of maybe danced together. Uh, most definitely. Um, so when I was done playing, I mean, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I honestly didn't know who the heck I was. I was always, you know, as you saw the pictures, I was Tom the baseball player, and everyone wanted, wanted to be around Tom the baseball player, and um, all of a sudden I'm just Tom, and, and not knowing who that is, my identity was gone. Um, I didn't, I honestly, and I could be up here for <laughs> telling stories a long time for that, but I, I didn't have anything to give anyone else. I didn't have anything f- to give myself. Uh, depression, anxiety, um, turning to anything that could, um, in a sense, make me f- or help me forget, you know, what I had become, which was really nothing in my mind. Guilt and shame and, and making bad decisions was kind of a, a part of my, my life for a few years. And uh, God blessing to my wife that stuck by my side through it all. Um, yeah, I mean, I had always gone to church. I knew about God, but I really didn't know who God was. I certainly didn't know what he, wh- who he was to me. Um, but after years of, of suffering, really, that a couple of men came be- behind me, beside me, and some, one of them read a scripture that basically showed me that I was a child of God. And I've heard it, um, but something at that moment changed. Um, I felt, you know, there wasn't thunderbolts and lightning and all that, but it felt like God reached inside of me, said, enough is enough. You know, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for not giving up. Um, And I realized at that moment who I was in Christ, that I was a child of God, that I was loved, and that I'd always believed that God forgave me. I could not forgive myself for my faults, um, but at that moment I could. And I wasn't Larry the lost sheep <laughs> anymore, that I was a child of God, loved, saved, um, needed. And since that day moving forward, that, that touched me. And I've, grant, I mean, I make mistakes every single day, right, Lisa? Um, <laughs> but I know that I'm forgiven and that I am not much fully mature as a Christian. I am maturing, but I have freedom in Christ and the greatest thing in going back to this past week is, you know, the, it was such an honor and such a privilege to work with all of your kids, to be with them, to be a kid myself, um, you know, to serve. And, and it's not, I didn't, I didn't have to go, come. I didn't have to sign up. I didn't have to be here. But I tell you what, the, the honor and the privilege of getting to be here, getting to serve children and therefore being served by God and filled up inside is the most humbling gracious, heartfelt love inside of me uh, that I can't really express into words, and I'm trying. Yeah. Um, but it's just an extraordinary week, and, and I just love all these kids, and yeah. it, it is just a, a blessing from God. Yeah, so that's awesome, right? So, yeah. <laughs> you said something before that uh, you kind of described the difference between I have to do this or I get to do this. 
What does that look like? Like even in relationship to Blitz and, and serving and dancing in a sheep costume and speaking to a room full of people or whatever, what does that look like? I, I, I have to or I get to? Well, um, having dealt with a lot of guilt and shame um, after my career had ended, everything was a have to. I need to be this guy for God. I need to be this individual for my wife, my kids. I mean, anyone. I mean, it was always a have. My life was a have to. I need to be a better person. When I realized that just by believing, I get all these things from God to, to be a child of God. Um, everything became a get to. Um, sorry, just showing up was a major get to for me. And I mean, just being here is a get to that fills my heart. Um, and I am a crier, so don't don't worry about it. I mean, I <laughs> cry at home all the time. But um, yeah, it is. I just can't express it more than that. That it's an absolute honor. That my identity was not in that baseball player that you saw. My identity is in Christ. And I tell you what, it's a freedom that I've never experienced for a lot of years. And had I not gone through those tough times, those hardships, I wouldn't have found it. Because Tom was enough for a while until I really needed God. And I am glad he was there and showed up. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you. Tom, I, I love it that you're uh, a former baseball player, uh, you know, a, a pitcher, major league. I love all that stuff. But I'm, I'm thrilled with knowing you and watching what Jesus is doing in your life close up these days. It's, it's a gift. So thank you. Thanks for being with us today. We and appreciate, I appreciate you. you, Brad. Thank you all.